Welcome to the Overdevest Nurseries YouTube channel. This is where we feature a wide selection of top performing garden plants, ones that have been especially selected for their performance here in our mid Atlantic and northeastern USA region. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. But if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, I'd like to suggest that you think about doing so, because we're busy posting new videos all the time, and many are introducing new plants that you're unlikely to find anywhere else. And if you come across any of our videos that appeal to you, it would be really great if you could kindly click the like icon, because that will help other people find the information too. Well, hello and welcome to Overdevast Nurseries. It's a beautiful day in the middle of midsummer. It's also a very hot day. Temperature needle is well into the 90s. But you know what? I wanted to take you here into our trials and testing area here on the nursery and let you see how effective white flowers are in the garden. Now, I probably don't need to tell you that these beautiful plants right here are panicle hydrangeas, hydrangea paniculata in many different types, sizes, and also flowering habits. Terrific, hardy, easy to grow plants. And I hope you can see that with all of these brilliant, bright white flowers, now even though it's a hot summer's day, and this poor old hardy perennial is melting severely. Their icy white flowers help to take the temperature down a bit and help to really brighten up and freshen our gardens. That's the importance of white in the garden. Something that those of us that have traveled to various gardens elsewhere in the world will have witnessed. Certainly, if you've been to the very famous Sissinghurst Gardens created by Vita Sackville West, you'll have seen there the very famous white garden where all the plants in there are either white or silver. Now, white is the color of purity and innocence. So along with that cooling, freshness, it also brings simplicity and a sense of space as well. So if you've got a garden somewhere that's small, perhaps a courtyard or a patio or a small corner somewhere, and you feel like it's kind of just constricted a little bit, try planting out some white flowered plants because when you plant them, particularly in drifts, you'll find that they help to kind of open up the landscape and give a definite feeling of space. For me, one of the most valuable things about using white in the garden is that it's a wonderful color, particularly going into the later hours of the day. You see, the color white helps to reflect the ambient light. So as you're getting into the evening and even into the darkness hours, you can walk out into your garden and be able to enjoy a very special atmosphere, almost serene. And in today's world, where there's pressure on us all the time, you know, alarm clocks, appointments, <laughs> deadlines, not to 60 in so many seconds in our cars, drive-in areas of fast food that will get us in and out in, f in so many seconds, just a lot of pressure that builds up during the day, the hustle and bustle of modern day living, and our bodies really weren't designed and built for that. So we need time to relax. And I know I'm very biased, but as far as I'm concerned, there's no place like being out in your own garden, in your own little bit of paradise, no matter how small it is. And particularly if you're out there with the environment and birds are chirping in the trees and you're surrounded by beautiful plants, you can release that pressure valve, just let the pressure go by and all the car honking, the horns on cars that were honking and people that were putting pressure on you during the day, that all just washes away and you can kick back and relax 
and enjoy your garden. And white is a fantastic color for that. Now I'm obviously very fond of the freshness of white too and the simplicity and sophistication of using white in the garden. And while we're here with all of these gorgeous panicle hydrangeas, there's other white and silvery colored plants that you can use as well. And an example of that is this wonderful silvery leafed shrub here. It is in fact a willow. This is Salix Iceberg Alley. And I just love the way that this silvery foliage reflects in the sunlight to give a very nice silvery textural effect. There are three plants planted here. They're spreading out to make very nice ground cover. At the moment, they're about 18 inches or so high. But if you wanted to keep these extra short and compact, you can go through and just shear them back. And the more you shear it back, the more they're going to grow out and the tighter and denser and more compact these plants are. Now, eventually they're supposed to get up to about five foot high or so, but you can see how this really makes a beautiful contrasting textural effect that really shows off all the surrounding plants around it. And because it's a willow, it's really tough and easy to grow too. And that's something that wasn't lost on Vita Sackville West when she was designing her famous white garden at Sissinghurst. She knew that she could start off the gardening year with early flowering perennials, things like hellebores, work in some early flowering bulbs like narcissus and juleps, and then as she got into summertime, then plant things like peonies and some gorgeous white flowering roses. Take that right through the summertime with her famous weeping silver pear and then as she gets into autumn work in some autumn late summer flowering anemones and asters and so on plants that take you right through the whole of the gardening year now today Sissinghurst is probably one of the most visited properties in the whole of the national trust network a beautiful garden and certainly well worth visiting if you're ever that way but you know what? You can do something along those lines as well. Perhaps not on the grand scale of Sissinghurst, but you can certainly plant some of these gorgeous flowering panicle hydrangeas. But I want to show you some other things that you might want to think about growing here in this region too. And it's just not willows that are tough and hardy and easy to grow. Things like the Russian sage here, Pervoskia, is a terrific plant too. Tough as nails, hardy, reliable, very drought tolerant. Once it gets established, here's a plant that just loves to grow in a sunny, well-drained position. Rocky, gravelly sites are ideal. And when you look in here and see this finely textured foliage and these silvery white stems that then in summertime now carry these blue flowers and purple calyxes that remain long after the flowers actually pass, I think you can see that this is a really great plant to have that kind of architectural upright growth habit that sets off other things that might be lower or perhaps spreading out to make ground cover. This particular one one is one called Blue Jean Baby that we're very fond of, though we feature several really good ones elsewhere on this channel and of course are stocked in our partnering garden centers as well. And it's just not Pervoskia. Think about things like catmints, the nepetas, really great plants. Again, love to grow in a sunny position. And the interesting thing that I've noticed is that it seems like silvery plants tend to be made up when you put them under a microscope and look at the leaves really close, you'll see that they got lots and lots of tiny little minute hairs, which is usually what causes the silvery effect on the foliage. 
An interesting observation that I've made is that usually plants that have that silvery furry foliage are usually left alone by browsing deer. So if you've got deer problems, these, a lot of these silvery plants will be right up your alley. So think about Provoscia. Think about Nepetas, the catmints. Also, what about some lavenders? They have that lovely, tight, compact, silvery mounds of foliage too, and blue and purple flowers. Artemisias is another favorite of ours. I love this kind of soft, silky effect that you get from the foliage on those. And Powys Castle is a particular favorite of mine. Lots and lots of really great plants, including now when I think about it, lamb's ears too, stashes. It spreads out over the ground and makes that really beautiful silvery ground cover. Lots of really good silvery plants that I hope you'll be able to use in and around your garden. And on some of the shadier, damper sites, some of the variegated hostas would be really terrific too. And then if you're looking for other possibilities on the woody side of things, let me remind you of the spectacular show that some of the Doutsias put on in early summer. Doutsia Nico is absolutely fantastic in my garden. I love the way it has those long spraying arches covered, clothed with lots of pristine, beautiful white flowers. And then, of course, you can't forget about putting in some rhododendrons and azaleas. Those sparkling white flowers bring our gardens alive in the earlier part of the year too. And they have the added bonus, of course, of being evergreen. Then I'm very fond of the double file viburnums. Viburnum summer snowflake is an excellent selection that we find does particularly well right here in this region and puts on a really terrific show. And let me remind you also of the white flowered Rose of Sharon, Hibiscus white chiffon from Proven Winners. This is a really excellent variety and will flower reliably right through the heat of the summer. In fact, it really likes it to be on the hotter, drier shade. Remarkably drought tolerant, and it has those beautiful white, pure white flowers that put on a great show for a surprisingly long time. Now, besides planting bulbs and annuals, there are, of course, lots of different perennials that will bring wonderful, pristine, white and cooling effect to your landscape. I like to use things like the white flowering bleeding heart, Dicentra spectabilis alba. This is just a magical plant, so easy to grow, and it will last for several generations. Once you get it in the ground, it will require hardly any maintenance. Might disappear a little bit during the summertime with summer dormancy, but that's about it. But when those white flowers come out with that delicate soft green foliage, it's a magical sight. Then I like to follow on with some of the white flowering peonies. Wonderful to have the freshness of those big white flowers sticking up out of the landscape makes a beautiful show and of course there's lots and lots of really beautiful white roses and then follow on perhaps with some white flowering phlox these are just absolutely gorgeous stand up and give a brilliant display and don't take up a whole lot of space and if you're looking to try and get something into a more shady spot then what about using some astilbes they are wonderful kind of light airy plants, super for putting into a semi-shaded moisture area where there's plenty of available moisture in the soil. And there's an added bonus too, and that is that the deer normally leave those alone. I'm a big fan of coneflowers and white flowering coneflowers are really just wonderful for giving the effect right through the whole of the summertime. 
and here in the shipping yard where we're marshalling all the plants before they go out to the various garden centres, there's a couple of really nice favourites here. So I love the way that the white flowers show up so beautifully against the dark green foliage. And this outstanding variety here that's called Sunseeker's White Perfection is absolutely amazing with its little colorette, I suppose you would call it, of multiple petals all showing off a lovely white upright stem on thick stocky plants. This is Kismet White which is a really very good variety too. These are young plants that still have a little bit of growing so the flowers will be bigger when you have them in your garden and of course this is the old time favourite Leucanthemum Becky tough and hardy and really reliable and very easy to grow. This is an absolute must if you're looking for white flowers in your garden. And if you have an arbor or a fence or a trellis somewhere, then you simply have to consider planting some of the white clematis. Those climbing queen of the vines as they describe them are really wonderful for running up particularly if you have a dark background. If you have a house that's got a dark colored walls or somewhere that's really able to show off the pristine quality of those white flowers, really beautiful. And don't forget about variegated plants too. Because plants like this cornus ivory halo, a variegated dogwood, will have foliage on it right through the whole of the growing season and as you see put on a really impressive display. Plants like this and Deeravilla Cool Splash and the variegated hibiscus and several others are really valuable because they keep the continuity going right through the whole of the growing season. As long as they have foliage they're going to be beaming out this nice white colour and makes really effective and again very easy and tough and reliable plants to grow. And then don't forget about variegated grasses too because the variegated foliage on vigorous growing plants like this Carex Feather Falls makes a beautiful item for spreading out and covering the ground. This will actually take quite a lot of shade but as you see it's remarkably vigorous with these big long blades here of crisp green and white variegation. And if you think that one's going to grow a little too big for you then you could plant this one which is Carex Evercolor Everest, about half the size of Feather Falls. It has similar variegation and both of these are terrific plants for putting into containers too. And if you want to take that a stage further, there's some beautiful new selections of the little blue stem that have terrific variegated foliage too. And of course there's the bigger growing Miscanthus variegatus which would be wonderful for putting in at the back of a bed or border or using perhaps as a centerpiece if you want to raise up and provide some sort of architectural feature in the middle of a bed or a border. Lots of really good white and green variegated plants that are evergreen and will basically last the whole season through. And the trick of course is to use a wide variety of plant material that's going to give you that spread of interest. Here we have a couple of really nice white flowering Philadelphus. They were covered in flowers earlier on in the year. Not only beautiful white flowers but also an exquisite fragrance too that adds a great deal to the enjoyment of gardening. And if you'd like to find out more about the plants that you can use in your garden, I'd suggest that you scroll through the videos here on this channel because over the years we've featured all sorts of beautiful white and silvery foliage plants that you might want to check out and then add to your wish list and then go and visit the local garden centres who will be able to help and advise you even more. All sorts of really good top performing plants that have been trialled and selected for their suitability for this region. 
This is David Wilson with a few more tips and suggestions and things that I hope will make your gardening more successful and a good deal more enjoyable. So enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.